Magician Review. Hello everyone, my name is Jason Parker. Welcome back to this channel about magic. Today I'm reacting to a magician named Wolfgang Moser from Austria on Penn & Teller's Fool Us. I'm reacting to three magicians from this episode of Fool Us, so check my channel homepage to see the rest of those. And make sure to stick around till after the reaction because inexplicably I will read Aesop's fables to you. I'm not even joking, this is something I do. And with that being said, let's just go ahead and jump into the video. My name is Wolfgang Moser, I am from Vienna, Austria. When I was 12 years old, my parents took me to a shopping mall. There was a beautiful young girl performing magic tricks. I had to buy this magic trick. I gave her all the money I had, and when I opened it up, all I got was a little piece of thread. And that's when I fell in love with magic. Even if you just have a piece of thread, what you can do with it can be a real miracle. I do a couple of tricks with liquids and they seem particularly magical because it seems more impossible to manipulate liquid. Tonight I will perform one of the oldest magic tricks in the book. This has been performed in Greece and in Roman times. I found a new version how to uh, perform this trick and I try to fool Panatella with it. That's funny when he said that as a child he opened up the box and found out there was a string inside. I thought he was going to say he was incredibly disappointed. <laughs> but then he said that's when he fell in love with magic. Anyway. Give it up for Wolfgang Moser! I want to show you a trick that I found in an almost 2,000 year old magic book. And the name of this trick is Water into Wine. A true miracle. <laughs> All we need is a teapot. Would you like to help me? Please stand up. I want you to check out this teapot. So please open it up and look inside. Make sure that it's empty and just an ordinary teapot, okay? Furthermore, we need some water. Would you like to help me as well? Please stand up. I want you to taste this water. And please confirm for everybody that this is in fact just... Water. Water. You seem disappointed. <laughs> I'm sorry. But... What about the teapot? It's empty? Yes, sir. Just an ordinary teapot, okay? So, we have the teapot, we have the water. Now all I need is someone who likes to enjoy a good glass of wine. How about you, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, wonderful. I also have a glass for you. And could you please uh, check out the glasses as well? Make sure they're empty, there are no powders, no chemicals. Look at the glasses, yes? Wonderful. So, for the first time in 2,000 years, water into wine. Now it looks like wine, it smells like wine, please go ahead and taste this. And not only does it look like wine, not only does it smell like wine, it is... Wine. Hallelujah! Thank you. You can sit down. Thank you. Now in this old magic book, the trick ended at this point, but maybe you uh, prefer some white wine. It's no problem, let's do another miracle. Water into white wine. And could you please taste this? And if this is a real genuine white wine, just say hallelujah. 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 Thank you very much. No, I think it's real quick, I'm just wondering, uh, the average spectator, if well, actually just the average person who doesn't know much about wine, if you gave them a glass of red colored wine and a glass of white colored wine and their eyes were blindfolded, would they be able to tell if it's red or white wine? I think I would be able to tell for sure because I've drunk a lot of wine. <laughs> I'm just thinking, watching the video now, that perhaps the wine was the same, but one spectator got one that was colored red. Just a theory. Let's keep going. Time for a toast, and I think this moment calls for a cold, sparkling beer. Cheers, everybody! Nice. So that's three different liquids. Because I want someone to choose a drink. Would you like to help me? Could you please stand up? Hold on to the teapot here. Uh, first, I want you to choose one of these books. Which one do you like? This one in the middle? Sure. Yes. This one is, it is great because there are over 100 different cocktails and party drinks in here. Um, you can choose one of these. So I'll just flip through and you just say stop whenever you want. Stop. Okay. So that's uh, uh, Sex on the Beach. <laughs> it's a good choice. I like this. This is vodka, cranberry juice, orange juice, and peach schnapps. All right, I also have a glass for you. Please check out the glass. So we have uh, vodka, orange juice, cranberry juice, schnapps. So let's see, for the first time in 2,000 years, 
water into sex on the beach. Please go ahead and taste this. If this is real sex on the beach, just say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Now, we have enough water left for one last miracle. Uh, would you like to help me? What's your name? Camry. Camry, would you like to join me? You know, I'm from Vienna and Vienna is famous for its coffee. So I'd like to make some real Viennese coffee for you. And you have to help me. Could you open up your hand? Put this on your, on your hand because actually you will do this all by yourself. Okay. And I will tell you how this teapot works. You just have to imagine this coffee. First the color, getting darker and darker. And next the smell and the flavor. And try to feel it in your nose. You have it? Very important is also the temperature. Could you please imagine the teapot getting warmer and warmer? Feel the teapot. It's getting hot. It's getting hot. <laughs> can you can you smell? What does it look like? Looks like coffee. It looks like coffee. It smells like coffee, right? And it's a real hot coffee. Please go ahead. Have a sip. Coffee. Thank you very much. I think. For real Viennese coffee, there's now only one last thing missing. Okay, let me go ahead and give you my thoughts before we hear Penn and Teller. Okay, there were several things I wanted to say. First, as soon as he brought out those three books, I was thinking, okay, he's using one of these Jedi powers, if you know what I mean. Second, I really liked his performance. It's very smooth and elegant. Even the props he has just are very classy. He's dressed in black. Everything is simple and nice and clean. It creates a cool ambiance. Some nice feng shui. Okay, maybe that doesn't apply here. Anyway, I just like his style. And in fact, I like when he's creating these magical moments when he kind of uh, moves the tea kettle, the teapot, when he moves it around like that to make the magic happen. I think that's really cool. Second thing, I remember one time at the Renaissance Festival, I was watching this magician, comedian, mime, juggler guy named Arsene Dupin, and he was performing, he had this little metal pot and periodically during his performance he'd walk over there and empty it into a glass and there would be more and more water continuously coming out so when watching this act my thought is that those little pots in this shape can contain a lot more liquid than you would think they can of course that doesn't explain anything about him having these different types of liquids inside third thing are we on three I noticed at one point he allowed the woman to have some water and then he brought out another glass and he was like look there's nothing in there right and she started to kind of look a little closer to his glass and he just pulled it up and he was like, hey, look, he kind of pulled it away. I suspect there might've been like some powder in the bottom of that glass to make the liquid turn red as it was poured in. Because if you watch when the liquid's coming from the kettle, it's clear. And then when it's in the glass, it becomes red. Kind of like some of these science experiments kits that you can get as a kid. But number four, are we on number four? I lost track, I'm sorry. I think in other parts of the magic effect he was doing different methods so that was the only time like a, a color changing liquid with powder was being used and this kind of magic performance is even more powerful when you apply different methods because it makes it harder to figure out. Number five I have to admit I was actually very impressed and amazed while watching this because I felt too you know for a moment you just get pulled in and it seems like he's pouring so many different liquids out of this little thing and how does he have room in there for beer and coffee and different types of liquid? I did see one moment where he might have possibly switched the kettle for a different one, but I was looking closely and I don't think he did. I don't know. If he did, he did it really smoothly is all I can say. And lastly, number six, I noticed he was using some kind of uh, mentalism techniques when he had the girl holding the pot and says, uh, you're gonna start to smell it's like coffee and you're gonna start to feel it getting hotter Sometimes when you suggest these things people can really start feeling them and I think of course Yeah, when she put her hand on the top part of that pot She started to really feel it was hot. So that's another cool aspect of his performance. He put in there at any rate Let's hear what Penn and Teller have to say Hi. All right, can you do a latte? Uh, no <laughs> All right, well, work on You're it. You're very picky. <laughs> so, do you prefer old tricks to new tricks? Yes, I love old tricks. I love reading old magic books and find old tricks that nobody does anymore and recreate them for the day. That's so cool. And so, how long does this take to work on? 
Oh, uh, this trick took me about three years to, to finish. Uh, and I also did a lot of research into the history of this trick, which is fascinating. And I'm performing this for six years now, seven years. Wow. OK, they're ready. p and what do you think? Wolfgang, um, boy, we loved the biblical allusions. That's the way to our heart. But you're also going back to the plot, not only goes to water to wine, but also a trick called think a drink. Yes. And that's very misleading, because think a drink is kind of a lousy trick. <laughs> the teapot can't be examined at the top. There's compartments. You fixed all that. You took all the stuff we don't like about think a drink and made it better. And the teapot is very, very magical. We don't think it's the only really magical container on stage. There's a lot of magical stuff going on here. And like many, many people, you got very lucky with uh, Sex on the Beach, as, uh, as many people do in both senses. And what we're trying to say here is, not only do you get lucky with Sex on the Beach, you always get lucky with Sex on the Beach. <laughs> And most of the time, when you want to uh, make coffee, you have to do some sort of switch to make that coffee go on. And we didn't see you hit a switch on the side of it, but we still think there was a switch there. This is something that uh, maybe the audience doesn't understand as much as we do, but you've taken a really shabby, obvious trick and turned it into a, uh, a real puzzler, but I don't think completely fooled us. Okay. Oh, Boy, what do you think? they're turning on us. What am I... <laughs> so, are you convinced they know how you did the trick? I'm afraid yes. Oh. <laughs> it's wonderful, man. Oh, so great, Wolfgang. Okay. So good. Just my best. I don't make it there. All right, now I'll go ahead and give you my final thoughts. I thought his performance was really amazing. Pen seemed to confirm what I was thinking about there being a switch of the teapot at one point, but at least from what I saw, it was nearly invisible, so really well done. And like I said, I just think his whole overall atmosphere that he's creating, his personality, makes it like a really elegant performance. I think I would pay to see him perform other magic tricks. And I think it's really cool when a magician can take an existing effect that's just so-so and like elevate it to some level where it's kind of more of a work of art. Anything else? I think that's about it. How did you like his performance? Comment below. And now it's time for Aesop's Fables Storytime Edition 15. I'm gonna give you a random story how about this one right here, the fox and the hound? Kind of sounds like a bar. Chapter 195 for those of you following along at home. The hound and the fox. A hound, roaming in the forest, spied a lion, and being well used to lesser game, gave chase, thinking he would make a fine quarry. Presently, the lion perceived that he was being pursued. So, stopping short, he rounded on his pursuer and gave a loud roar. The hound immediately turned tail and fled. A fox, seeing him running away, jeered at him and said, Ho ho! There goes the coward who chased the lion and ran away the moment he roared. First off, I'm thinking why does a hound consider a lion to be lesser game? Isn't the lion like the king of the jungle or something like that? If I was a hound, I wouldn't be messing with any lions, that's all I'm saying. So what is the moral of this story, hmm? I guess it's like another one of those like don't think too much of yourself, don't be too proud kind of thing. It seems like we've got several of those be humble stories from this book already. Maybe the real problem was that that fox was there ready to laugh at him. Someone there to watch his embarrassing moment and say, ho ho, there goes the coward. Because really it's hard to be embarrassed if no one's watching. I'm pretty sure I've completely butchered the interpretation of this story, so please leave a comment below and help me if there's any greater meaning to this aside from be humble. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to delicately click the like button. I'll be making several magician reactions this week, so make sure to subscribe and check my channel homepage so you don't miss one, because we wouldn't want that. If for some reason you feel like supporting me in my endeavors to react to other magicians' magic, then you can feel free to check out my Patreon, link below. On there I'm sharing some of my personal life and teaching some magic and taking requests. Anyways, I hope that you are having a great week and I will see you next time. Yep.